hey guys welcome back to my another video this video is going to be a uh, very basic on how we can submit a form and it's all going to be on react applications so let's begin so the first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, add the uh, css from the bootstrap because i'm going to copy the uh, form uh, control and form group all the form layout from the bootstrap because i'm not going to type it down i'm just going to show the functionality of how we can submit a form or create a form in a react okay so the first thing i just grabbed the bootstrap css what i'm going to do is I, this is my uh, react project basically also and this is uh, creating using the uh, cli okay so i already put my link here on my uh, public so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my app.js and this is the boilerplate that is coming with the uh, React. So I'm just going to delete it and I'm just going to do as a test here. Okay. So once I type as a test and this is my CSS here, which I don't even need it. So I'll just delete it and this is the test. And here it is what we are showing up. So I'll just go in my bootstrap directly here. Just grab some component here uh, from the form. So basically I'll just grab this that's all I'll just grab this and I'll just grab it and I'll just paste it here okay so once I paste it here uh, the in it's complaining about the input because the input is not close here so that's why react JSX is complaining that uh, this input is not close here and also here as well so I'll just close it here too okay so now it's not complaining now of course it's going to complain about the class because the in react uh, we cannot use the a uh, class we need to use a class name okay so I'll just copy everything if you guys don't know how to copy this then you need to press a control D and that's all in VS code and it will copy everything okay so now the class name has been set up okay so now if I check it here okay looks like this is how it looked like my form it doesn't have any it doesn't have any container here let me do it as a container here okay now it show up a little better i'll just keep some padding on the top margin and padding on the top and bottom doesn't have never end so now here here it is so this is my email and this is my password and when we submit it okay it's it's yeah it's required because the html has a required field i believe here on email uh so that's why uh we will see that okay so now let me bind with this with a state okay so this is has an email and a password here right that's we what we have it here so what we're going to do is we're going to create the uh the state here to handle this form so i'll just create it as a state and this is going to be what register no login sorry login state so this is going to be my login state so the initial login state is should be uh what's username uh, email address sorry the email address what we have here and what we have is we need a password right password and that's all and and that's all and there is one more thing that we need to add it is basically if it check me out check me out check me out and this is basically going to be a boolean boolean oh the boolean field so false okay so this is my login state okay my login state has been set up okay there are a lot of fields that we, i don't even need it such as like this id stuff like uh, you can delete it if you don't want to be there okay the first thing is the okay we create a state so now, now we need to bind the state with our input field and this is our uh, email so what i'm going to do is whenever this email is changed right so basically uh just on change function we'll just choose on change function so whenever this is going to change it then we will set our state okay so here in uh basically this is going to be event right oh uh, i forgot that i haven't used a typescript here i'm using the js so that's why uh, i just use the any there so now here uh the we'll get a value so we'll just do event dot target dot value and we'll get the value here and once we get the value we will set this value to login state if we doesn't know how we can get the value i can print in console log as well just to see it okay let's see it so uh so if i go here okay use state is not defined whenever we use or uh, use state basically it will we need to also import this from react but it doesn't know where to get it from so that's why it's complaining on the back so i'll just use as use uh, state from from 
react right that's it and okay so now if i refresh it okay okay it's complaining user is not defined okay it's complaining there that's fine so oh uh, yeah it's using the okay don't worry about this because it's using for it should be html4 uh well, it's fine it's using on somewhere under form here so whenever i change it so as you guys can see my my data is here tester tester right so basically now here i'm getting the value on change so i will set my component there it's straightforward so i will also print uh, my my state here just to see that how this state look like okay so this state is going to be a login state right so i can print using a json.stringify message so this will give you a, the it, it, this function will change your object into the string so I'll just use a JSON the string file login state here. So if I see, then I can see here uh, my the object, right? That's what my object, uh, not my state. So here I'm going to set uh, what is it called set login state, right? So set login is a basically nothing. Whatever the login state what we have, we'll just use it. Basically, it's an object, right? So basically, it's an object. So whatever the state value file, we'll just use it here uh we use spread operator and and if there is the uh, email then we want to change the email it's straightforward that's how we can use a spread operator the benefit of spread operator is you wouldn't have to uh type it up everything we don't have to type it up so if i change it here as you guys can see my email is changing it's similar like what we do in angular we use a form reactive form or the, or the uh the template template driven form it's similar like that uh, here we're just changing our uh, state here okay it's the same thing the same process will repeat here so on the password also same thing here and instead of the email i'll just use the password it's straightforward so I'll just, once we have so now then uh, check me out here so i'll just use it here uh the checkbox right it's a checkbox but checkbox is a little difficult uh not difficult a little different i mean so what we can do here is we'll just use as a check i believe we can get a value as checked here and here is a check me out okay now let me see that if it has been changed or not so if i check me out is yeah it's true it's false right it's changing here and if i do a password password changing here email changing here as well and the button right the next step is the button so when button we can also disable it right if we can disable here so to disable such as like this uh, oh sorry we need to use a disable like this I forget about this so if any of this state right is empty then we can disable it uh if any of this state is empty or check me out then we can disable it there are, uh, we can create another function here just for validating validating purpose or what we can do is uh, on login state uh if if email is is equal if it something has an email or oh, and we can check it in every component or as i mentioned we can also create another function and that will validate we can do that as well so here instead of the uh, email we will use this if it's password and if check me out is true then it's valid yep yeah we just need to play around this validation a little bit here guys so now uh it should be uh, okay if the email okay okay i'll just do false here okay if the login email is false and check me out is true uh, check me out is, is check me out it is not even required here for values and we just need to check that if both of these is empty is and then disable it right Let me try R. Yep, that work. So check mail doesn't even matter. It's optional. But if there is an email, we put it. But if there is no password, then it's disabled. But if we put a password, that is enabled. That's it. Of course, we could also uh, like whenever we add an email. If it's not email, then we can also trigger like uh, a lot here on the bottom. And if a password is something like five character long, six character long, one one stuff like that, we can also do that okay that's going to a little advanced because we need to write a lot of logic for password stuff but but we can find easily that information in in a google or in stack overflow guys 
So that's all what we have it, or you can write your own uh, logic on the validation if you like. Uh, we can also do that. It will take a little longer. So I'm not going to cover that. I'm just going to cover this. That's all for this. How we can submit a form easily in a React application. I'm going to put this code on the uh, GitHub. And if you guys like my video, guys, please do subscribe my channel. I'm going to put more tricks and tips on this channel. And thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye for now.